Does it sometimes feel like it's man and machine versus the trail, battling your way down it? Well, this is how to make the trail work for you. Probably the two biggest things I think in making the trail work for you are line choice, more about that in a minute, and pumping. So making speed from the trail, uh, we've done loads of videos on this. On a pump track or man-made rollers, it's really easy to see where you do this. When you roll from the downhill into the flat, your bike sort of squashes anyway, especially if you're on a full suspension bike, you'll see the suspension squash. So what we're trying to do is exaggerate that. And if you move it a bit further back on the bikes, so you're really squashing the back wheel in to that uh, compression on the floor, you'll really make a lot of speed. Then all you need to do is sort of translate that to the sort of more natural trails that you're gonna be riding. And this is a good example. It's quite a rocky flat section here. So it's quite hard to pedal anyway. So there's, there's risk of you bouncing around, especially on flat pedals maybe coming off. Uh, so actually I'm going to concentrate on pumping and there's a nice little hole here that if you get the timing right you'll really feel it and that's going to make you speed and when you start looking in more detail down the trail there's going to be a lot of these so adding a bit of pedaling into your pumping you really start using that trail for speed. So pumping is an example of when you're putting or using a technique to make the bike heavy, to make speed from the trail. This is the opposite of that. Now I'm going to use a technique to, to get light. But this video is about using the trail to do that. So there's definitely loads of opportunities for that. It's quite a good example here actually, where you've got two diagonal routes. And if you just pump into this and then do it a little bit earlier, as soon as you're coming out of the pump, you hit that route, it'll just give you a little hop. So you're actually gonna get up and off the bike, um, off the trail, you know, weight's coming off the bike. So I'm then gonna hopefully jump over the backside of this route, take out any risk of me sliding on that. The other reason you might wanna get light, and that's probably something I use more down here, is to stop loads of little impacts. If you start riding into every obstacle on this trail, it's really gonna start slowing you down, losing momentum. So I'll be using heavy to make speed and then light to carry that speed. An added bonus to really make the trail work for you is to get some energy from some blackberries. Sometimes it's just moving your line to a different part of the trail that just works a bit better. Uh, this is quite an example because so it's quite flat and rocky and rooty. And if you ride in the main line, you're going to be turning across all this stuff. You could go inside, which is really nice and smooth, then you're making this corner a bit tight. So what I'm gonna do is move my line just a bit further to the outside, where it's nice and smooth, a bit less used, uh, and it's gonna open the corner up, but then I'm not gonna be battling across these rocks and roots, and hopefully be a bit smoother and quicker. I think it might be a bit of the downhill racer still in me, but quite often I'm trying to look for sneaky lines all the time I'm riding, might not be a downhill track. Uh, but this is quite a good example where I can come really close to this tree and not many people are riding it, so it's actually pretty smooth. It's a bit of precision riding because I'm not a million miles away from hitting my bar on that tree and I might have to do a little unweight because obviously these roots are coming off the bottom of the tree. If you slid on that first one, you're probably going to go straight into that tree. So trying to think outside the box a little bit and look for lines where other people aren't riding probably means it's going to be smoother and this is straighter, so probably faster as well. I rode so close to the edge then that I rode through some nettles it's the trail fighting back. Trees normally do their best to try and kill you on mountain bike rides, either with their roots or with their very hard, barky, solid mass when you hit them. But sometimes you can use them like a berm because obviously they have that bank of roots come off side of them. So you can see the line that's worn in right up next to the trunk of it. It actually gives you a nice wide line and makes you fast around this corner. Before I was talking about taking out compressions and impacts so that you keep your speed, keep your momentum, but actually you can sometimes use them, especially when you're trying to slow down. So here, quite a fast section and then I've got to brake really hard to a tight corner. So some braking bumps, so I sort of compress my bike into those. It's going to give me those impacts, slow me down. 
But here as well, it sort of gets into this boom where it's a bit of a bobsleigh run. If I stay in the middle and break, well, I can't break too hard, so I'll slide up. So rather than that, I'll actually sort of uh, pump my bike into this boom. So I'm really squashed in, and then I'm gonna have more friction basically to slow myself down a bit better. So it's using those edges and those compressions to then slow you down. I think it starts to feel really good when you get a few of those things I've talked about starting to come together, like finding sneaky lines and making the trail really work for you. Especially me as like an ex-racer, I definitely like to think that I'm doing it better than someone else or picking a better line. So it's something I try and like to do all the time, really. Hopefully you'll do all right with those and give us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up on this video. Catch you later.